The very first thing that happens when you load into a game is your teammate pinging your off-meta rune choice. Yep, if anything goes wrong, you already know you're the one that's going to get blamed immediately no matter what. And our challenger expert Hector is going to receive a wonderful blessing to make sure that happens. His teammates invade, forcing a very sloppy level 1 fight to occur. He feels pressured to help, and as he's about to kill Alawi, his Aatrox makes sure to flash in to secure the kill and die. And Hector falls soon afterwards. What do you know? This is all his fault. I don't want to win, we can lose. What the? Why am I getting flamed? Like, it, it, they played it terribly. Graves looks to repay the favor by coming mid to chunk Diana a little bit, take some of Hector's experience, and lose almost his entire health bar. And it's very clear he's not happy with Hector. I don't know what he wants. <laughs> To be fair to Graves, though, this is what his fizz does next. Hector tries to dive to Diana and does that. Yeah, maybe the flame is a bit justified. Then, a couple minutes later, Hector gets roamed on by the most obvious Twitch gank of all time and decides to just not press his E for a free kill. Maybe his teammates are right. Maybe he does want to lose. And things are not getting much better as things go on this game. If we take a look at top lane, Hector's Aatrox has lost his tower to an Alawi. You already know that's going to be a nightmare to deal with the whole game in the side lane. Meanwhile, the enemy Twitch is permanently diving bot lane. He's got 7 kills and is going to assassinate everyone on the map once he starts creeping around in stealth. And team play is definitely not going well either. Graves decides to start dragon later on into the game, while both Hector and Misfortune are at less than half HP. Needless to say, the fight is instantly lost. And of course, the chat blows up with pings as everyone is mad and flaming each other. Games like these are obviously pretty frustrating and way more common than they should be in solo queue. It feels like the game is over before it even began because every everyone is just losing their minds, and it definitely doesn't help when you're a part of the problem too. However, there is a reason why challenger players can win almost any game in this elo, even in these terrible circumstances. And that's exactly what today's guide is going to teach you. How to carry even when all your lanes are losing, teammates are flaming, and everything seems hopeless. Best of all, you won't need challenger level mechanics to pull this off. Instead, you're going to learn two simple concepts that are easy to execute that you can immediately start applying to win more games. I know, sounds crazy, imagine seeing results not from endlessly grinding game after game, but because you play smarter. Well, that's exactly what our subscription service is designed to do. Radically accelerate your progress in League of Legends. We have the highest number of courses on the entire internet that are specifically designed to accelerate your improvement as fast as possible. Live commentaries where a challenger player teaches you how to escape the exact rank you're stuck in. And one-on-one coaching. We've got all the tools to supercharge your improvement. The best part? Our service is completely risk-free to try, as you're kept safe with rank up insurance. If you don't significantly improve, improve while actively using skill cap, then you get your money back, no questions asked. So click the link in the description below to start improving fast and get the rank you've always wanted. Alright, now back to the guide. So there's two things you need to make sure you do to try and win these types of games where the odds are completely stacked against you. First, don't panic. When everything is going wrong, it's very easy to want to try and salvage the situation. This is the biggest issue players face when dealing with a feeding team. Trying to assist in every player teammates are going for is just going to backfire on you. Then you'll fall behind with everyone else and all chance chances for a comeback are completely thrown out the window. All you need to do is keep farming and stay relatively caught up on gold and experience. Playing your own lane and staying away from bad plays is key here. Hector does this for the most part. Although he was definitely griefing early on, he's a challenger player at the end of the day, he ends up stabilizing his lane and is doing alright for himself. This seems like a worthless first step, but it's actually really important. Going even or just slightly behind in lane is all you need to do because of one important thing about low elo. Your opponents don't know how to use their advantages properly. They're very likely to either get cocky or or make silly mistakes because they don't know what to do with their own leads. Like this Warwick who was getting overly cocky and kept giving over free kills. The reason a lot of players fail to come back in games like these is because they tilt along with their teammates. If your score is 0-5 to five and you've got no farm or items, then you won't even be able to punish the enemy mistakes you do see. And trust us, your opponents will make mistakes. They're low elo for a reason. Like this Twitch watches Hector walk through a ward and still plays aggressively. Because Hector was doing kinda well, he can actually punish this and manages to score a massive shutdown. Okay, Okay, step one is pretty easy, and Hector has already achieved it. He stayed stable, picked up some shutdowns here and there, and now he's strong. This brings us to step two. While he got those kills, his Aatrox died in top, so the tilt and pinging continues. Needless to say, Hector is the only one doing well on his team at the moment, and the only one who isn't tilting. If you're in a game where you're the only player on your team who is even
evenly matched with your opponents, then there is one crucial thing to keep in mind. You do not want to force encounters where it's members of your team versus multiple members of the enemy team. Just because you're strong doesn't mean you can suddenly 1v5 fights all on your own. Your primary goal is to force 1v1 or small skirmishes where your individual power can match your opponents. It doesn't matter if all players in the enemy team are fed if you're just fighting one or two of them at a time. Abusing this is why challenger players almost never lose when smurfing in low elo. Think about it. With their mechanics, they'll outplay every 1v1 or 2v2 they ever get into. This way, they individually shut down everyone on the enemy team all on their own. Of course, you're not challenger, and we'd never expect that from you. You're not mechanically good enough to guarantee that you win every fight. Our goal in this video won't be to teach you how to outplay everyone. Instead, what we'll focus on is how you actually force those 1v1 fights consistently. If you can force them, then you can practice your dueling and skirmishing so you're able to win games like this more consistently. So, how do you do that? It's actually quite easy, and Hector shows us how right after this failed attempt on Twitch's life. Afterwards, he just continues to push the wave, and that's it. That's the well-kept secret every challenger abuses. Pushing waves aggressively is something you can do on any champion, and it almost guarantees that the enemy team will split up. When you push a wave, someone has to collect it. This means that one or maybe even two players from the enemy team will split off and go to collect it, and the rest of them will be scattered around the map waiting to regroup. How you punish the separated members just depends on your champion. If you're a control mage, maybe you hover around a teammate with CC and punish the player in mid who didn't respond. If you're an assassin or bruiser, you can just stay in the lane you've pushed in and try to pick off the responding enemy player. How you find smaller scale fights just depends on the game that you're in and the specific circumstances. There's no hard rules for how you find picks and kills. That being said, the key is to split people up and you always achieve that by pushing waves. Let's see how Hector did that in this specific game. Okay, I'm going to pretend to leave and I'll come back around and camp this brush. He's probably going to come farm this wave. Yeah. By the way, here's a quick tip for this cheese. For this bot lane brush, you can just walk in like Hector did, but for the top lane one up here, you'd actually be spotted doing that. So generally, good players flash or use a blink into the brush to cheese their opponents. Anyway, at this point, the setup has been done. All Hector has to do now is execute and kill these isolated squishies. Again, it's very easy to point to his mechanics here for why this is working in the first place, but that's the whole point. Pushing waves is to give yourself the opportunity to do this, and then it's on you to execute on it. This is how challenger players consistently dominate low elo. And besides, you clearly don't need crazy mechanics to be successful and outplay others. If Hector can do it with his decaying hands, then you're more than capable of outplaying others as well. You just need to actually practice going for more solo plays. Anyway, after spawning, Hector does the exact same play. He moves towards bottom and begins pushing. It's really that simple. Every play you make when trying to win games like these should begin by pushing the wave. Then you react to what your opponents do and how they split up. In this specific case, Twitch is scared for his life, so he has Zyra babysitting the area. Well, they're really scared of me. Which means that they're over committing to defending bottom, which means that I can just rotate and potentially help my teammates kill everyone. Okay, I thought he was going to ult me. What am I doing? <laughs> What he's doing here is actually very important to understand. Our whole strategy of isolating the enemy team is that you score kills by beating them in smaller scale fights. If you're winning every encounter that you find yourself in, then the enemy team is obviously going to start responding to that. In this case, Zyra and Twitch are clearly aware that Hector is trying to score picks, so they're holding hands and farming together. In cases where multiple players begin reacting to you, keep this one goal in mind. Do not fight anyone. It is really good for you if they're constantly trying to shut you down. This means that they're over committing resources to a single member of your team. If they do this, they will start missing waves, get jungle camps taken, or the rest of their team will be overwhelmed by your four other teammates. That's exactly what happened at the beginning of this play. Since Zyra and Twitch both responded to Hector pushing and putting pressure, that left the rest of their team at a numbers disadvantage that Hector's own teammates capitalized on. Once in mid, the same thing is happening. Warwick keeps desperately sniffing for an opportunity to try and kill him. Meanwhile, Diana and Zyra both respond to the wave that he pushed in. So what does he do? Nothing. He just walks back and forth, baiting them. All the while, his teammates are reaping the rewards of the enemy team being preoccupied. They get to sneak Baron, while Hector just kind of toys with the enemy team. I'm just gonna zone. I need to pretend we're not doing Baron here. I'm just gonna run around and look like an idiot. Now, it's easy to say that this is possible just because he's playing Fizz and has a ton of mobility options. That's not the point here. The main lesson is that if you're strong enough, you can push waves aggressively. And if you happen to draw the eyes of multiple members, then you just need to keep them busy and waste their time. For example, if you're perhaps a victor here, you could do something similar, but just standing a little further back because you don't have mobility options. It just depends on the specific circumstances of your game, but the core concept should remain the same. After securing Baron for his team, Hector goes back to the same concept we've been drilling the whole time. Push waves and split the enemy team up and if no one comes to defend you from split pushing then you can generally just dive the person defending by yourself right split pushing as an assassin with baron is generally pretty high value that being said my teammates have to be stuck at tower because twitch is in the game so 
Mm, I need to leave. They're all rotating towards me, and my teammates just made a play up there, so I should just get out. Yeah, see. Again, same thing. Push first, then if they send multiple people, just waste their time. Now I can just sync up with my teammates in mid, maybe push the wave while they all push top lane. Again, he begins the play with pushing. Okay, so all I have to do is stand here while my teammates push. And the same thing happens again. Two people defend versus him, then he just waits and wastes their time. His teammates are getting things done with a numbers advantage. And if only one person is defending versus him, then he goes aggressive and looks for kills and outplays. Though, to be fair, at this point, it's not much of an outplay because of how fed he is. And that is a wrap on this game. At this point, he's way too fed and his teammates have all calmed down and are all doing fine now. With all this hard effort, Hector is able to have a little fun field day in this lobby and proceeds to easily carry the rest of the game from there. Think about where this game started from and how easy easily Hector carried it by doing really basic things. To sum this video up, challenger players are all about control. The point of pushing waves and going for isolated plays is that it puts all the agency in his own hands. If only one or two people react to his push, then Hector has all the control over the fight. If he plays well, he can win and get even more fed. Mechanics are obviously nice here, and if multiple people come to shut him down, then he can keep them baited and wasting their time. Again, this is a result that is in his direct control. Learning to control the map consistently like this will let you carry even the most impossible of solo queue games. Before we go though, let's address the elephant in the room, the feeling of being stuck at your current rank. We all know how frustrating it can be, but what if you could take a shortcut to understanding the game on a deeper level, gaining ranks faster than you ever thought possible? Our subscription service not only offers the highest number of courses available online, covering literally everything you could ever want to know about the game, but they're also specifically designed to accelerate your improvement as fast as possible. So click the link in the description below to unlock the most extensive and effective training resource you'll ever find. And that will do it for this one. We here at Skillcapped want to thank you for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.